Hey there, thanks for tuning in. You ready for another episode of my Bigfoot sighting? All right then, let's do this. Seen a bunch of rundown new horse towns where the church is the backbone, loves in the plow, and the five string melodies grooving. With the farmland rows where the roots run deep, beyond the noise of the busy streets. Where the songs of the South are soothing When I hear the front porch picking down Home rhythm ringing out I don't run from banjo music Yeah My Bigfoot sightings are something I will never forget It was around Thanksgiving 2006 I was 16 years old, and I was headed out to my front porch to sit and talk on the phone with my friends, as a teenage girl would, of course. And um, I went out and noticed that the light was blown on the porch, so I knew I needed a bulb to change it. So I went back in, got the bulb, came out. Unscrewed the old bulb. I was starting to put the new bulb in. And then I look up and across the street in a hay field, I seen this huge creature walking by. Had to be at least seven or eight foot tall. And I was guessing I would say anywhere from 500, 600 pounds. It was enormous. And it was walking by just like Patty. If you've ever seen the Patterson Gimlin film of Patty, it was just like it spot on. It turned like from the waist up. It it turned as it was walking and looked right at me. Huge arms. Its hands were below its knees. Huge arms. And... scary it's bringing it back just like it just happened it was like a a grayish color with white mixed in with it and light brown um its hands didn't have any hair on them they looked like they were like a, a real light brown color its face didn't have any hair It had really thin lips, and it had a flat nose, and I could see the chest. The chest did not have any hair. The chest was that same light brown color, so I'm guessing it was a male because I didn't see breasts. It looked like a, a man's chest, but like a bodybuilder. I mean, it, he was ripped. I could see muscles. Like, he had, like, six-pack abs kind of thing going on. (sighs) And uh, he was walking really slow. But as soon as I seen him, I turned and ran. Well, I, I turned, shut the front door, and ran downstairs and told my family what I'd seen. And they kind of just brushed it off like it wasn't anything. But uh, I called my dad. And he came out and got me. And uh, took his spotlight. And we drove around. Looked all the way around uh, my family's property and my neighbor's property with the light. And we couldn't see it. We never seen it again. But I did notice before that happened, I had uh, my two cats outside and they come running up the sidewalk to me and they were acting kind of jumpy, kind of nervous. And I I was hearing this weird uh, popping and cracking sound that I've never heard before and I've not heard it since. And my aunt said she smelled something that night before all of this happened. 
she said she smelled something nasty outside, like like a nasty wet dog or uh, a dead animal rot rotting on the side of the road, you know, roadkill, something like that. But his hair, and I say he because I do believe it was a male, because he, I mean, he had pecs. His chest was like built. His hair was really neat. It, it looked like he'd been groomed. And uh, he he didn't have any visible ears. Couldn't see the ears. But uh, the next day, I went out looking to see if I could see footprints, tracks. And I couldn't find any. The ground was really hard and there was quite a bit of leaf litter on the ground which would make it hard to see tracks anyway. But I did go look, couldn't find any tracks. And I never believed in anything like that, like growing up or whatever. I always thought it was something that my family told me to kind of keep me from going outside at night, to keep me safe or whatever. I never believed anything like that was real, ever. Until I seen it. And then. After that night. It's changed my whole perspective on. All the cryptids. And there were. Uh, several. Neighbors. Friends. And just other people out. In my community. That have had sightings and encounters. With. The very same thing. Our sheriff at the time. When I seen what I seen. He seen the exact same thing within a two week span. And he said it was white looking, like a white or a gray with a little light brown mixed in, just like mine. And he actually had a couple deputies and himself, they went out and tracked it. And they tracked it for over a mile behind his house. And he said they found footprints. And he said it crossed a fence by his house, and uh, he found hair in the fence. So he had hair and footprints, and he took a couple different kinds of fruit, grapefruit, oranges, stuff like that, and he set it out trying to bait it in to see if he could get pictures of it with his game camera or something. I never heard anything about him getting any pictures, but after that, he tried to, well, he kept looking and searching, but I don't think anything else came up for him. One of my neighbors, and this was uh, probably in the 1970s, way before I was born, one of my neighbors was out coon hunting or something. He was doing something with some kind of hunting dogs. I'm not sure. This is like a third person passed down generation kind of story. He was out and looking for his dogs that had got out and got lost, I guess. And he went behind his house. And um, uh, he probably went two miles behind his house directly, like straight into the woods. And where we live in eastern Kentucky, it's the Daniel Boone National Forest. And there's a lot of caves down in there. And there's a campground called Turkey Foot, Turkey Foot Campground. And basically, like, all these little trails behind people's houses around to there lead right down to that campground. And, um... He found some of his dog tracks, and he followed it for a little while, and then he heard something behind him, like a strange noise, and he turned around, and he said he'd seen this white-looking thing standing there, and, and he'd never seen nothing like it before, and I just assume it would be the same thing that i seen, and he said that he thought it was following him it had followed him from his house down into where he was looking for his dogs and I had a friend that on his way home from work 
he would travel the same road that goes right by all of our houses where I lived and the, the ex sheriff and my friend Jenny, which I'm about to tell you about in a minute, but anyway. He would travel that road every night on his way home from work. He worked like second, third shift, whatever. He would be probably coming by my house at two or three o'clock in the morning. He said he came down the hill by my neighbor's, my next door neighbor's house. And there used to be an old barn that sat there in that field. He said he got to the top of the hill and as he dropped over it and came down, And where his headlights were shining down towards that barn, he said all of a sudden he could see two big, white-looking hairy legs and then a chest. And then his headlights hit its eyes. And he said the eyes were glowing red, like blood red. And he said, oh, well, there's Bigfoot. (laughs) He just brushed it off like it wasn't anything oh there's bigfoot oh but he wouldn't turn around and go back and look or try to see it again because it scared him that bad he just kept running on truck and let's see it would be around 2010 i think the next time that i seen it myself i went and got one of my friends and brought her to my house because the next day was my oldest son's birthday. She wanted to be there for his birthday party. And we were like way into the Bigfoot stuff, especially since my first sighting. We've been friends our, our whole life and stuff. We got back to my house, and it's probably around 2 a.m., I believe. I believe that's what time it was. And uh, she said, well, let's step outside and see if we can hear anything or see anything because uh it wasn't just us it was like everybody around us the neighbors our friends that lived close in our area all of them had been hearing all kinds of weird creepy stuff that they didn't know what it was and it didn't sound like anything that any of us knew what it was or anything that we had ever heard before so i was like okay let's go So we step out on the porch, and we look up towards this old church that is to the left of my house. And it's, oh, maybe 200 yards away. And um, in the road in front of that church, we seen something really big and black. It was like a black silhouette. And it looked like it was crouched down, like squatting down. And she's like, you see that? Do you see that? I'm like, yeah, I see it, but I don't know what it is. And I know it's not there normally because, you know, I look at this area every day. And um, she yelled, hey. And all of a sudden, what we were looking at grew in size at least six, seven foot compared to it being crouched down. So altogether... What we were looking at had to be at least eight foot tall. It was enormous. And all we could see was, you know, the black outline of it, the silhouette, because of the street light that was in front of it on the other side of the the church. And uh, that really freaked us out. And we got scared. And we pretty much just went right back into my house and stayed until about, 7, 7.30 that morning. Then we finally got brave enough to, hey, let's go up there and see if we can see any tracks or anything. And I forgot to tell you this. There was a snow on already from a few days before and it stayed on because it was really cold. I'd say that snow, oh gosh, it had to be like half a foot at least. It was a good snow. Everything was froze solid. It was ice cold. It's February 1st. Well, anyway, we got in my car and we drove up there. And the road was still completely snow covered. And where vehicles had been driving on it, it kind of packed the snow down on the road and made it 
pretty much just like a solid sheet of ice. Um, so when we got up there at it, I stopped and let her hang out the passenger window and look, and she couldn't see any. She she couldn't see any good like footprints or nothing. Everything was packed down so tight that she couldn't see any tracks at all. But we know for a fact that we seen a Sasquatch that morning. No doubt about it. There's no way it could have been a bear. Absolutely no way. There's no way a bear could go from being on all fours to standing straight up on its back legs and being as tall as the thing that we've seen, especially um, because how close we were to it. There's absolutely no way it was a bear. And we don't have any other animals here that would compare to that. No way. My grandmother actually seen probably, if not the same thing, then probably a distant relative of the same thing that I'd seen. And right there in the same spot, basically, she seen it. This would have been probably in the mid-80s before I was born. She was leaving her house and going just directly next door, just a few feet away, to her mother's house. And it was probably 9, 9.30 at night. And she had a street light beside her house. She went out. She was walking down to her mom's house. And she didn't even get, probably not even halfway to her mom's house. And she said she seen something humongous, tall, like very tall. I don't, I never got to hear like how many feet she thought it was, but she said it was huge and white standing right beside of her mom's house. And she turned around, walked back to her house, went in and stayed in until the next day when the sun was out. She never said exactly what she thought it might have been, but I believe it was the same thing that I seen, the sheriff seen, my friend seen. I think it was the same thing. Because what little details that she gave, it it just sounds just like what we seen. And uh, my grandma used to go clean house for this lady that lived uh, three houses down from us. And she was in a wheelchair, and she couldn't, you know, she couldn't get up and do anything. And my grandma would cook for her and clean and take care of her house and everything. One morning, my grandma went up there, and the little lady brought her into the kitchen. She told her to come into the kitchen to the window where she could show her and tell her what she'd seen. She said the evening before, she was sitting in her kitchen and looked out her window behind her sink, and she said she seen two big, white, hairy legs walk right by her window. She said that's all she could see was two big, white, hairy legs. She didn't know what it was. Couldn't tell her anything else but that. And it really shook her up. Uh, she was pretty scared by it. My friend, uh, Jeannie, she said her and her mom, this isn't Bigfoot related, but it's still good anyway. I heard her mom and her sister were on their way uh, let's see. I think they were on their way home from somewhere. So they were like real close in the same vicinity as all of this Bigfoot stuff. They came by one of our neighbor's farms and they had um, like miniature ponies and goats, stuff like that out. And let's see. Ooh. It wasn't completely dark outside. But there wasn't a whole lot of light either. Probably like 9.30. I'm trying to think of what time of the year it was. 
I'm not sure if, if she ever told me what time of the year it was. Seemed like it was cold. I'm wanting to think it was winter when they seen this thing. I don't know. But anyway, when they went by our neighbor's farm, he has this big, huge hay field, and he's got it, you know, cut slick. Well, of course, because it's winter. It's really low and cut real short. They said they seen basically a werewolf type creature. Like, what's that movie? I'm pretty sure she said it looked like the werewolf in the American Werewolf in London. That werewolf. That pretty much summed it up. And it was running in this field right beside their car. And they all three seen it. And she said its eyes were glowing red. It had sharp, pointy-looking ears. I didn't get, like, much description of the hands, but they might have seen its teeth. Seems like maybe I remember her saying something about its teeth. Sharp-looking, like, fang teeth, like a dog. And that same friend, Jenny, she said one night, I'm not sure if her boyfriend was home at that time or not but she had stepped out on the back porch to do something I'm not sure but she seen this humongous tall creature at the edge of the yard real close to the tree line and uh, it was about at least eight foot tall huge it was really big eight Pushing nine, maybe nine feet tall. It was huge, she said. And she dropped her, I think she was out there pouring out some water, and she dropped her kittle and went back in and got a light. And she came back out, and she shined the light on it. And it was a light color. Its its hair was a real light color, like gray-white looking. And she said when the light hit its eyes, that it glowed blue. Like this really vibrant, not really neon, but a really bright, pretty blue, like Kentucky Wildcat blue. And it really freaked her out. So much that uh, she worked at McDonald's at that time. And she uh, had a forest service officer come through. And she got him to the side and she was asking him if there was any kind of animals in the area that I shine would be that shade of blue, that really pretty blue. And he told her no. That we didn't have any kind of animals here around this area that would have an eye shine that kind of color. And she told him what she seen. And he kind of just brushed it off and laughed at her. Like he didn't believe her. I've heard all kinds of strange sounds out in the woods that I cannot explain. I don't know what they are. I've never heard them before, but they sound just like what other people that's had uh, Bigfoot activity going on around them. It's just like what they describe. I've heard whistles. I've heard plenty of tree knocks. I don't know what kind of animal would be in the woods that could pick up a piece of wood and hit a tree. And, you know, and it sounds like a, a ball bat, baseball, like poof. The howling, I've heard howling that is just, it makes your blood run cold. It don't sound like coyotes. I've heard coyotes plenty. I know exactly what coyotes sound like. Definitely not coyotes, what I've heard. I have a, a friend that lives over in western Kentucky. He had a sighting when he was a young kid. Maybe somewhere between 12 and 16 years old. He might have been. Can't remember what he said exactly. He was going to a junkyard to get a part for a vehicle, I think. 
and he'd walk like way down in this junkyard right at the edge of dark dusty dark and he got on the back of this car to take off a windshield wiper or something like that and when he got up there and took it off he turned around and he seen this well it was a sasquatch maybe six seven foot tall brown light brown dark brown kind of mixed kind of standing there and it spooked him and uh he had a german shepherd dog with him and it scared the dog too the dog took off running and kind of just left him stranded there and uh he took off running Ran, got to a barbed wire fence. The dog was long gone, way past the fence. He climbed to the fence, looked back, said he could still see it standing back there by the car that where he was at. And he took off running and just never looked back again, and he never seen it again. My same friend, Jenny, her and her sister were outside when they were little. They were mm, 10. They were outside in their front yard one evening. And this was in the wintertime, too. And there was snow on the ground. Not sure how much, but they were out playing, throwing snowballs, making snowmen, stuff like that. And they said they seen something black come up behind their house. And they stopped looked and I guess it was crouching and it stood up and got taller and uh, they said they ran into the house shut the door looked out the back window at the kitchen where the thing would have been and they said they could see just its legs going by their kitchen window too there was one morning during uh, deer season, high-powered rifle season here in Kentucky, that I went hunting down behind my house. And uh, ooh, it was probably like 5.30 in the morning. I just got in the stand, got the gun set down, set down my little snacks and water for the morning hunt. I just got settled in, got quiet, comfortable, whatever. And then all of a sudden, you know, I can hear like fidgeting in the the foliage, like something walking through the brush. And the wood line from the deer stand I was in might have been 30 yards at the most, pretty close. But I could hear something coming from the wood line closer and closer to my deer stand. And I had to climb a ladder to get up to it. So it was up pretty good. It was up pretty high. But anyway, I could hear it getting closer and closer. And then it stopped right when it got right next to my deer stand. And I could hear something hitting the bottom of my deer stand. It was like this homemade, like, look, it was like a a little tiny building on stilts. But I could hear something hitting those posts at the bottom, like, boom, boom. And it did that for maybe five, six minutes, long enough to scare me to death. And I had a nine millimeter, like, on my side for, you know, stuff like that or whatever. You never know. When you go in the woods, you never know what you're going to come across or who. So... You know, I always pack a pistol when I'm out in the woods, no matter what. But it done that in five, six minutes. I was scared to death. And I can't think of nothing else in the woods that would do that. A deer certainly wouldn't do that. If it would have been a bear, it would have climbed up there and got me, killed me, ate me. I really don't think it was a bear. And I couldn't see... Unless I would have shined a light, because it was still dark at that time. So it wouldn't have done me no good to go look unless I wanted to shine a light. 
And if I would have done that, you know, I could have scared away anything that I might might want to kill and take home. So I just sit right there, scared to death, didn't move, didn't know what to do. My aunt, she also seen something that she didn't know exactly what it was one time. And this is still in the same exact vicinity that all the Bigfoot stuff happened that I've talked about tonight. She was on her way home. She said it was around 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. Dark, and I believe it was in the wintertime real cold, too, then. I think there's a correlation there with the it being cold out and Sasquatch sightings. I really do. I think they're more active when it's cold. I don't know. It's what it seems like to me because everything else that I've said or talked about tonight, it's all been wintertime. It's all been cold when it happened. It seems like they're more active when it's cold for some reason. But anyway, she was on her way home, and she rounded a curve maybe a quarter mile before getting home to where I lived. And she said something huge crossed the road in front of her, something. She said it was like, it was dark brown, but maybe like an auburn color. Had long, it the hair was long and shaggy and kind of matted looking. And it crossed the road in front of her and was from one side of the road to the other and one step and into the woods, in the ditch, in the woods, gone out of sight. And it happened in just a couple of seconds, really fast. Two big, hairy legs. Seems to be a theme. A lot of people seen two big, hairy legs out where I live. I also had a neighbor, a really close neighbor. He would come out around 2 o'clock in the morning to get in his vehicle and go to work. One morning, he said he came out and there was huge handprints all over his truck and, and the glass, his windows on his truck. Huge handprints and something like slimy looking like slobber spit and a little bit of hair was all over his vehicle. And he swears to this day that it was Bigfoot. And it it sounds like it to me, too. And he was directly across the road from the fella that had lost his dogs in the woods, his hunting dogs, and went and found it and seen that thing that he thought was tracking him. And my aunt has also seen something beside of her house. She said she went out, and this was also in the wintertime, too. She said she went outside, and it was even with the roof of her house is how tall it was. And that was probably eight, nine foot tall. Huge. And she said it was dark colored, probably, she said black. She thought it was black because all she could see was like the black silhouette of it. She lived behind um, the property where the sheriff lived that I told you about that seen it years before he even lived over there. Right there in that same area. She said one night... And this was before they even had electric. They didn't even have electric over there. One night, their dogs started going crazy outside. And hollered at them, and they still wouldn't be quiet. Something had them tore all to pieces. So she blew out her little, oh, let's see, what, what is it, like a, an oil lamp they had back then? An old oil lamp. She blew the light out. And she could see out the back door. Off of her porch. And the porch was like three foot, four foot off the ground. Something like that. She could see this black silhouette of something standing over there. 
and it was like downhill. And whatever it was, was eye level with her and her standing like up in her house looking out the back door at it. So it had to be pretty big. And that property where she lived is connected directly to the campground that I told you about Turkey Foot in the Daniel Boone National Forest. Maybe a mile and a half directly down in her backyard is Turkey Foot. And there's been quite a few people that have had sightings in Turkey Foot at the campground. And my friend that I told you about that lived in western Kentucky with the siding in the junkyard when he was a young boy. He's camped at Turkey Foot a few times and seen he's had a siding himself at Turkey Foot. One night, he said he could feel something rocking his camper. And he looked out the window, and sure enough, there was this light-haired creature standing out there. And that was what was rocking his camper. Maybe six, seven foot tall. Light colored hair. And the other time he camped down there, he seen the same thing across from a wire he had hung up to like put a tarp over to hang it up. Real close to his camper. Same colored thing. About the same size. And uh, my aunt that seen the one standing even to the roof of her house, that aunt, she's been seeing things recently close to her house. They come up on her porch, and they've been peeking in her windows, and it's got to be so much that she's bought cameras recently and put cameras up to try to get pictures and videos of it. She said they come up beside of her swimming pool. They're underneath her little garage where she parks her ATVs at. And she said that they they come out of the woods across the road from her. And those woods are the same woods that connect right back to Turkey Foot Campground. And In the same yard, right across from my aunt's house, is my grandma's old house, where I had my very first sighting when I was 16. It's so closely connected, all of it. Every bit of it is connected. We have a lot of strange stuff that's happened out there. Well, that's it for tonight's show. If you've had a Bigfoot sighting and would like to be a guest, please go to mybigfootsighting.com and let us know. Thanks for listening. Have a great night. Seen a bunch of run-down new horse towns Where the church is the backbone, loves and the plow And the five-string melodies grooving With the farmland rows where the roots run deep Beyond the noise of the busy streets where the songs of the South are soothing When I hear the front porch picking down home rhythm ringing out I don't run from banjo music Yeah The sound of a memory brings me back To the bluegrass playing on my dad's a track His pick-up man had been through it through the day on scrugs and skags Booking their bales to those Tennessee jams There's no other way that I'd do it When I hear the front porch picking down Home rhythm ringing out I don't run from banjo music Yeah Summit on the backwards, backwards and double time Looking at the soul and the tremolo Kentucky style Those are the anthems Rushing by with the bass on the stereos booming.
Sweet tea, kind of sound. 